Welcome to Ace MTG, and I'm here with Hands of Justice, and we're going to be doing our first Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft. Super excited for it. So obviously, we've both looked at all the cards of the set. I did a top 10, but I haven't really analyzed it for draft yet. I've been avoiding things. We're both huge fans of Paul Chian. We love his channel. We loved his little push to Mythic and watching him draft, and I've been holding off even on that. I haven't watched any videos, trying to come in a clean slate and kind of show all of you. So right now, what is your experience so far with the format as far as drafting you know i'm super excited about it i spent about like six hours today just like reading as much as i could about all the different cards just trying to soak it all in um i admit i've seen like half of one of his new drafts for paul chian no again, spoilers i won't say anything but like super huge fan of his um yeah you know on my channel, I've, I've actually been inspired by him, and I'm just sort of doing, like, my standard series, Road to Rank 1, kind of inspired by Paul Chian. So he's an awesome, awesome content creator. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely love his drafts. And I even love, too, when he got done with his little series, he went back and looked at his first couple drafts just saying, like, what was I doing? <laughs> and, you know, and that's <laughs> probably going to happen for us. And yeah. neither one of us are like quote unquote drafters we both enjoy it we both end up learning a format and doing well so it's going to be interesting to see how we do on this first one also we did this together on hand of justice's channel before yeah. and that was after we had actually been drafting and we were getting pretty decent we sent each other a couple records seven one seven two <laughs> and then we film it and we go oh and three so those things could happen but <laughs> that was amazing <laughs> <laughs> so before we jump into this though with no knowledge, when you've done your first draft for a set, do you have a few like little keys, tips, tricks that you normally kind of come into, at least that's in the back of your head? Yeah, I mean, I definitely am like a proactive uh, drafter and player in the sense that like I typically try to favor like strong creatures over um, unless like a, a piece of removal is absolutely amazing. Like yeah. it, try to be a little bit more proactive than reactive, you know, reactive okay. cards are amazing, certainly in control decks in standard, but I feel like they can be a little bit more narrow in draft, and you really want to have like a proactive strategy, like, you know, what am I going to do to be able to close out this game? Um, partially it's because I'm, you know, typically an aggressive player, and I play a lot of aggro, and so that's just how my brain works. I, I think, you know, how can we like close this out, you know, in the most efficient way possible, while also understanding that like, you know, there can be huge bombs that you have to respect. And, yeah. So obviously, yeah, like I, I want a couple pieces of removal for those bombs, like you're saying. But also I find a lot of times if you're just jumping in, you really don't know the format very well. I often find green as a good color to kind of be in just because it's a little bit more straightforward, right? You know, you're going to get some stompy-ish creatures, usually a little oversized than the other ones. Other thing I'm always really looking for early on is making sure I'm gonna be able to curve out, getting enough of those two drops, emphasizing good two drops early on. A lot of times in a format, right, you, you find these big bombs and you're looking at your curve and you're sitting at doing nothing until turn four. And by the time you for start sure. getting your bombs down, it's already over. So for me, I just know a lot of times I have a tendency to lean towards green in my first couple drafts, just cause I just feel like that one's almost always there, but we'll see what we get. So yeah. let's pay these gems right now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, hopefully the queue time's not too long. We get right in. I was loving it yesterday. First day on the ladder, right? And every single one of my queue times were like, oh, there we go. Already ready. All of my queue times were just a few seconds. Oh, I did not share the screen with you, did I? That would be great if you don't mind. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> everybody. That would be a disaster for us. So <laughs> share our screen. And while you're doing that, just one thing that I wanted to add kind of, you know, with the drafting is that, um, you know, especially with green, I looked at like the stat lines of all the creatures that are in both like common and uncommon for the set. And anything that's over a four toughness is going to be extremely rare and tough to deal with. So green, I think, has kind of a natural advantage there as well. Uh oh. So yep, I, I can see it fine. You can see it fine. The only problem is I just made you disappear by doing that. All right. Really oh, quick, let's okay. do this pick, and we'll, we'll try and figure that out later, everybody. Um, so, good removal, but like you said, you normally don't lean there early. Um, I mean, if, if the removal is great, happy to take it, too, though. Like, I think that, like, Rambling Possum is really good in green. Um, I agree. Earth or Joe is a nice creature that it's, it's multicolor, so maybe it's a little bit... Um, more of a risky pick on like the first pick, but it does create like I'm some also value. a bit beast bound out three seconds. Which one do you want to go with? Go hell to pay. Love it. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, great too. I mean, okay. green is always, always great. Okay. Um, so 
in limited, this is not as bad. Obviously, plotting this could hurt people. We did take a first card plot. Yeah. Um, and I think there's some really strong cards here. The Baron is really good. It's a very powerful um, uncommon there, the 3 4. And uh, it just it has a lot of like nice synergies. Um, Emergent Haunting, I also think, is a really, really good card in blue. It's um, mm -hmm. basically something you play on turn two that turns into a very aggressive threat. Um, Stop Cold is a nice removal spell. And I think it's kind of between those three, honestly. I think the other cards just aren't quite as strong. So you said you're leaning towards uh, Emergent Haunting? Either that or the Baron. I think those are two or are the really Baron. strong. You know, since the Baron is like two colors that we aren't, maybe try like the So the one haunting. of my things is that's very strong, but I often have a tendency not to try and get two color early on. Kind of sure. see where it falls out, but totally. Can totally I mean, again, again like yeah. I absolutely love Rustine. So if I took a green card on that last pick, I yeah. think I would probably lean towards there. Um, totally. And we could still take Honest Rustine here because it's a great card. Yeah. It's, it's a really powerful um, thing that it sets up. I think, you know, uh, Tyrant Scorn, I guess that's like a removal spell we could look at also. I can, it's kind of hard to, to re read the, the, the font there on it. Tyrant yeah. Scorn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this one. Okay. Destroy target creature, mana value three or less in the blue Since and got, black. Blue is, yeah. Blue is a possible color. We could consider that. I think it's between that and Honest Rutstein. I think um, the other cards just aren't quite as interesting. Yeah, as far as other ones, I'd like, not this early, but I do like Holy Cow. If we're going to kind of the blue-white uh, way to turn Flash the other style thing deck, is I like Thunder the Thunder Salvo. Salvo. Good too. Yeah. Um, I think Rustin's going to be fun, for sure. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll try and go Rustin right there. So, uh, let's see, what do we have? Not for us. I feel like this one is a pretty clear throw the, for, from the saddle. Just like good removal. Yeah, I think so too. I Otherwise, mean, we could like speculate late on like if we the need lands. a splat. Yeah, again, like late, I would go that. Really, with the rest of the pack, I might go that if we did not have the throw from the saddle. But yeah. right, we already have a decent green creature. We have if we're going to go into black or we go into blue. So I I'm with yeah, that. I think this is pretty much I think, like the best card in the pack. I mean, Hergus Strix would be great if it like tables, but. Um, other than this, we're not really missing out on too yeah, much. Yeah, overall, here. a kind of weak pack, I would say. Especially, For I mean, sure. you don't love this necessarily as the fourth pick, but we do need some removal in here. Yeah. Okay. So oh, this is nice. Very expensive, but I think pretty good. I'm actually a fan of the beaver, the vigilance, the saddling, putting things on. For um, sure. Yeah, I think this is definitely probably the beaver um, because. Yeah. I think like Betrayal of the Vault, since it's like we can only have like a couple like super late cards. Yeah. And while, while it is powerful, like we'll be able to fill that slot with some. 100%. I do not like it this early on. I definitely, totally. I think the Beaver though, having that Vigilance 4-4 four, four, yeah. it's for four is already just good. Plus we have extra abilities. So yeah. I, I'm all on board for that. And see Usually what we're kind of passing. I mean, Steer Clear, I don't think is awful. No. No, it's fine. I think the beaver is just a little bit better considering we already have three. Hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, again, um, if we were going to, oh, oops. Okay. I was gonna say two, two life okay. link for two. I, I, I like that fine. in black. Yeah. I think it's just less good than the beaver because the beaver has like an interesting. It, it you know can start gaining. Hundred percent. Yeah. So now this is where um, we start looking more. Where is our second color going to be? Are we going to go into blue? I've seen a lot of decent red floating around as well. Uh, I kind of call me crazy, but I kind of like the Oasis Gardener because it lets us stay open. And usually cards like this aren't that amazing, but the fact that it gives you two life really and, kind of makes it decent. And and this is a set that really rewards you for going three colors, actually. Interesting. Okay, okay so I will take that. I think I probably would have gone with the Roadrunner. Oh, we could take that too um, if you want. Just to see if I'm going to start going into red and then. Yeah, uh, for sure. I think maybe the pick that I, you know, chose there was a little bit kind of leaves us more options. Yes, but, more yeah. options to start splashing things like that, especially early in drafts. I totally agree with you that I think the set could be one that we could actually hop into three colors. But typically yeah. in our first couple drafts, I don't. So what, yeah. what's your read on this one here? Um, I like Black Stag Buzzard. It's in our colors. Yeah, like, I agree. It, it helps. Can you know, kind of set things up. Otherwise, if we didn't think it was strong enough, we could pick up like Bristling Backwoods. Um, 
you know, and there's the blue cards are okay, but not amazing. Yeah. Oh, see, I'm seeing oh, nice. these. I mean, and I like. This one's a, I think this is an easy deserts do. It does give the removal, yeah. We don't really have a lot of removal yet. I guess we have one piece, but it's it's nice, cheap interaction. Um, and like angle biter is pretty replaceable. All right, we'll leave it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out to get your picture back on. If you take a look at the, oh, I think, I mean, I'm just going to hover over my 2 2 lifelink oh, yeah. for two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Am I still coming through, Ace? Yeah, yeah, no, your, your audio is coming through, but I think once I shared my screen with you, it just moved your camera away. So. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, because when I've shared the screen, I can't see you anywhere, and somebody in Discord would probably tell me what I'm doing wrong, but. <laughs> They're not here for me right now. <laughs> yeah, Bloodseeker is good here, though. I'm I agree with this pick. Yeah, no, I, I like the early two drops. And all right, so, so this yeah. one. I think we want to pick up the, the Grizzly here because, like, there's definitely, like, mount synergy. Um, yeah. I think that, you know, it, it wouldn't be wrong to grab conduit pylons here either if we wanted to, like, speculate on a third color um, just to kind of help help out a little bit. But I think that the 4-2 is, is perfectly fine. And there's a couple things that, like, reward having four power. It also, I mean, yeah, rewards for power and, I mean, decent beater in a late game. So this is interesting. I actually think here, if we are considering splashing, that's a decent removal spell. We yeah, could take. it is. Um, otherwise, I actually think that Silver Deputy is a fine two drop because it can help find our third color. We'll put our blue down here just for now. But yeah, totally happy with what we picked there. It's absolutely fine. Here, I think that, yeah, Ambush Gigapede is a decent, you know, like, late game thing. Gold Pan's fine, too. But we oh want my gosh, like... yes. Yeah, another Bloodseeker here. Super yeah. happy to pick that now, up. Now, finding a couple little pump spells, protection spells we love. So, yep. the rare, unfortunately, not for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so, now, I... usually pack two. I normally now tend to start, right, we're honing in a little bit. If I saw a bomb here, maybe we start to branch somewhere else. But now I'm kind of really trying to hone in, looking at the black, green, and maybe some of the blue. So I think this one is a pretty easy choice between Buried in the Garden and uh, Hard Bristle Bandit. Bandit because it helps um, both like color fix and accelerate us. And then Buried in the Garden because it's a bomb and it's pretty easy to splash. Yeah. I mean, right now, as far as splashing, though, all we have is our Oasis Garden. So, I mean, yeah. excellent and card. There's a ton of good fixing in green, um, so I'm not super worried about that. You've got, like, Hard Bristle Bandit. You so have... which one? Are you going to go... I'd probably go with the, the, the Buried in the Garden. Well, they're both really good. I'd, either one I'd be happy with. All right, we'll, we'll go on the upside. Yeah. Okay. The so now, again, if we, if we really start good. going into white, right? Excellent. Yep. Again, removal spell. Yeah, this one, I think uh, Rictus Robber is super powerful. Yeah. And that's probably what be, would be my pick here. Because we're agree. not for sure. We're yeah, not we're not for sure, sure that yeah. we're going to go with, you know, a splash. But yeah, if not the Rictus Robber, I'd probably take like Mystical Tether here. You know, I suppose we have Deserts do, but Mystical Tether is like better removal. Mystical Tether. Why am I not seeing that one? Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, see, I think yeah. if I didn't take that, I would probably take the black removal. <laughs> Yeah, and you totally could. I, you know, I think just if we're thinking about going into three colors, yeah, yeah, you know, and then it also little... leaves us with the room. Do we want to put a couple deserts in there for that extra potential minus? So, um, I think if it comes together, yeah. I would, like, yeah, I wouldn't focus on it. Okay, we got and another we got buzzard and another throw throw from the saddle. The other card here. Um, that I think I would mention at least is mobile homestead. And, you know, you don't want to have too many vehicles, but like this is functional. I think it's a really good one. Yeah. I think it's a really good one. We also have mounts in this deck, so it's potentially something to consider. Um, but I think that the buzzard is good because it's, you know, it, it, it gives us um, evasion. Otherwise, throw from the saddle is the other card I'd consider. Yeah, I think I actually lean a little bit more towards mobile homestead than sure. the buzzard but let's do it we 
Wow. I mean, again, if we splashed <laughs> blue. There's some great splash cards here. Yeah. Yeah. If we wanted to stay on color, I guess we could take like the unscrupulous contractor. Or the that would be my pick bail. if we, that's all we were going to do. But I think that but like, if we're going to splash yeah, two excellent we're super choices. Super rewarded for, for splashing in this. And like Lazav is really good. And so is the, um, oh, the other, the one next to it. Um, the two, three, you're not hungry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Doc Orlock could be very powerful too. But I think that maybe let's go for the one four on um, Lazav. I think it's maybe a little bit more upside. I agree. I find splashing with a two drop a little hard because it's very rare you get it down on turn two. For sure. I think a little more, more late game potential on the other one. Wow, this is a great. Wow, we've got so much goodies here. We have um, full steam ahead, which is just like straight up. I win the game if I have a bunch of creatures. <laughs> um that like pumps your team plus two plus two for every everything mm -hmm. and trample. Um, so I, I feel like a, a slightly smaller curve we need right now. I mean, I would take this a little bit later personally, but sure. Yeah, I think it's that free strider commando is so amazing and it's so it's so yeah. so um, versatile. I'd probably take maybe one of those two here. Otherwise, we've got deserts do, which is another option. But like, I'm never unhappy. I, I would never holy be cow another. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, looks amazing. Otherwise, Skullduggery is a decent, cheap uh, combat trick. And if we didn't want to overload on a splash, we could take that. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a really good one, too. I'm going to... Boy. Maybe since it's a legend, like, possibly go Skullduggery. But I guess two's probably... I don't know. You could go either way. I'm trying it. I'm okay. going to be greedy Sounds on great. that one. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Whenever you uh, yeah, cast an outlaw spell, do we? How many outlaws do we have? I don't think we had uh, many. Not a ton, I don't think. I think it's a lot better in like Grixis. Yeah. Here I'd probably just take Trash the Town. It's a perfectly one. decent trick. We have two. Trash the Town. Yep, I agree with that. Yeah. Although there's a lot of interesting uh, or a lot of great red cards. A lot coming, of great red. The critics, Thunder Salvo. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I may have gone. Uh, green red on this one early on. Yeah, we we thought we would have been rewarded for sure. Like, look at all these scores. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Um, Jeez, like, I know, right? I don't know how good Raven of Ill Almonds is. I mean, Trash the Town is another good removal. I like, like tra Trash the Town Let's better. Yeah, I don't yeah. like one two. Just doesn't do enough for me. It's just not. Yeah, this is not super exciting. All right, and our opening pack comes around. So if I you mean, think it's between pylons and silver deputy, if we need any more two drops, like deputy really does help you find something, and then it has li like utility. That is later true. On. So I, I might take the the, the deputy here. Deputy for sure, two drops. Okay, that's true. We don't have many two drops yet, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't crew up our Ooh, mobile homestead. Do. Nice. That's a nice nice gift there. Yeah. I'm glad that tabled. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's just an easy pick. We'll just take think, that right yeah. there. Black is super open. Um, unlively, actually, Lively Dirge is quite good, uh, especially if we have like a bomb to go search for that costs four mana or less. Which we don't yet. I'm going to put that still on the sideboard. I don't know if that's going to make the main cut, but we'll see. Oh, I disagree. I think because we oh, can go find Honest. It, okay. I think it's, I, you could find Honest Rutstein. You could find Lazav because you can find it and then put it into play. That is true. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Gold Vein Hydra. Love it. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of this pack. Really? What is this um, one? Commit a crime, put a plus one counter on it, spill triggers on once each turn. I think it could be really good in Rakdos. Yeah. Also, I mean, this is just a great mana sink where it just keeps getting to pump itself up. Totally. Yeah, I think it's a fine card, but it's just not better than that. Yeah, it's, it's not for <laughs> us right now. We don't have too many crimes. Uh, this is hopes at tables. Either that or Deserts Do. Or yeah, like Deserts Do is good as well. But this is a you pretty know. easy, I mean, we, we need some type of bomb. 100%. <laughs> um, wow, there's some I'm good cards I'm a big here. fan of the Alchemist, uh, but yeah, let's Yeah, I was going to say, looking. Alchemist is probably my first pick, um, unless we want to get crazy and, like, splash for, like, um, Jolene or something else like that. Yeah, I'm but not I, willing this late to go. Yeah, like, now I'm no. trying to really hone in my deck. I love the <laughs> yeah. plot on this. 3-2 Trample Body anyway. 100%. It's fantastic. Yeah, this, this, this is definitely Allo. Yeah. Alchemist, but, you know. No, Jolene <laughs> is a fantastic card, though. What do we have here? Story oh up to X, artifacts or enchantments, create twice X. Is, 
Oh, wow. There's a clear cutter. It's too bad. I mean, double blue would be Holy super hard Holy jeez, though. But this is a crazy bomb. It's like two six sixes, basically. Yeah. I don't know how we don't take that. I think we just force it. Just, like, make it happen. Well, they gave this a five, huh? Um, eh, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't know why you would. I mean, clear cutter here. Clear cutter. <laughs> wow. Boy, I hope yeah, this thing doesn't get stuck in our hand. I mean, as far as black and green other cards, I don't think we're missing that much. Yeah, so I don't I think mean, it this hurts is... to take. Right. I mean, I think that this is going to be really hard to splash, but who knows? Maybe it'll happen, you know? Yeah, we'll see. Speaking of hard to splash. <laughs> right. Um, um, unfortunate accident, I think, is the clear pick here. It's hard removal. Yeah, I think so, too. Just making like sure I'm not missing a desert or a... Oh, yeah. Desecrator is 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 not bad as a four drop, but it's like certainly not as good as straight removal. I yeah. Don't think. Especially if we're looking to set up a couple of our bombs, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So as long as we have some early interaction, gain some life, a couple kill spells, hopefully gets us to that late game for the big boys. Plus, yeah, I mean, we I could always Hydra early. It dies. We get the treasures. That's how we play the clear cutter. Ooh, wow. Another unfortunate accident. I like that. Yeah, I like that as well. And again, unless for some reason I was going with the Drake, but that would have to be I'm going more blue. I do really love the Drake in a blue deck. I actually disagree with you here. I think that Bristleback Sentry is a, is a very good uh, two drop because it that's just, true. Like, it it just sits there and tanks. And then the moment you have like a, a you so know, you would rather take game. that than the removal spell. No, no, oh, not okay, over the okay. removal spell. Oh, yeah, no, just, no. I'm just talking about, I like this. Wasn't here. Yeah. I, yeah, I just yeah. like the Drake in a blue deck. I've been, I, I would love oh, to build totally. around it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm just saying, if the removal wasn't there, I'd probably take that. I mean, there we go. We have another. Let's just... do it. Consuming Ashes looks great. Yeah, I think that is the pick. Play a couple creatures, kill all their stuff. Seems good. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I would I would love this, though, just to be able to get some blue mana out of it. Oh, that's fair. Um, I think that Ashes is good enough that... Yeah, you know, I think so, too. I guess it's like, how much do we want to play Bonnie Paul, right? Right. Here, Free Strider Commando is amazing. Yeah. I, I, I would have a hard time, like, ever passing that card. <laughs> it just <laughs> seems so good. I mean, a 3-3 three, three for 3 as its floor, I mean, you'll you'll take that. Well, and honestly, the other thing is like just looking at the stat lines across like all the commons and uncommons, like almost nothing has a five toughness. Yeah. Um, you know, or five power. And so it's just like head and shoulders above everything else. If you can, you know, here, uh, Betrayal the Vault looks perfect for us. Yeah, I think we have to take it. And then we'll have to see is it going to make the cut with the rest of our deck or not. But this is exactly yeah. what you talked about earlier, right? These things will come around again late. You can only have so many six drops oh. anyway, so... I think what might happen is we might realize we can't play Bonnie Paul and we'll play that instead. Only to cast mount spells. You're not a mount, are you? Yeah, probably not. No. Um, well, we could take another Tyrant Scorn. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to make the cut, but it's probably the closest thing. Yeah, we, ha we have to look if Blue's actually going to fit in this deck or not. So now probably late not. game, if I'm not going to put anything into my deck. Let's cut Jolene. <laughs> Uh, so yeah so i actually i'm just gonna take this because i don't have a copy oh, of it sure. yet yeah. that's the only reason okay. i personally do it <laughs> yeah um, yeah. um again i'm not I, gonna play this and i'm not gonna play this i guess i take rise of the varm it's just because yeah who knows, maybe i'm maybe gonna maybe take it just because one it's an uncommon helps with your volt progression uh gold pan here might i mean probably not but it makes a, a treasure treasure yeah to help things out I don't think we need the Tomb Trawler, but I guess I'm, I'm taking it just because it's an uncommon and that's a common and neither one's going in the deck. So that's just Perfect. how I go on that one. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look here. <clears throat> All right. So take a peek. What we have. Putting you over here. So for our splashes, we've got Buried in the Garden, Bonnie Paul, and then two Lazavs, and then I guess the Tyrant Scorn. And I think we probably want to choose like between blue or green, or sorry, blue or, or white. Um, Redstain is main deck, right? Because that's in our colors. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. wrong one. Well, I thought we had two of these Scorns. Uh, Did we yeah, not? I thought, yeah, I think you grabbed another one. There we go, okay. 
And then Be uh, Beard in the Garden is also off color. Yeah, that that's just gone. Oops. Okay. And our deck, honestly, might be good enough that we don't even have to splash. So we I have 46. We if we took these out, that's five right there. Yeah. We could make, like, a, a pretty solid just um, two-color deck, and I think that would be fine. Like, we have, I think, enough removal. I, I like the other cards. I guess the only thing to consider there is, like, cards like um, Oasis Gardener, uh, Silver Deputy are, are a little less amazing if you're not three-color. Mm -hmm. Um they're, they're perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them, but I think that uh, they do help you branch out a bit more. So I could see like um, how many, how much fixing do we have here? We have we have the Oasis Gardener, the Silver Deputy, Search for the Land. Um, I think Homestead had... does when it attacks. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, it's not really fixing though, but it at least helps had... you. We had gold pan also, which is like an equipment that is kind of bad, but it also gives you Does the treasure if we wanted to add that in. We could consider it. And then like, I guess the question is like, how much do you want to jam Bonnie Paul? <laughs> so that's the thing is we need to cut seven of these cards if we're getting this in. <laughs> yeah, because I think that we would probably like, um, like Lazav is a pretty good upside, right? And we could also just decide to like let go of the Bonnie Paul dream and then just, yeah. you know, maybe like um, have like a couple of Zobs or something like that. Is that worth messing up the mana base? Well, I mean, technically our Hydra is a little bit of fixing. When thing dies, we'll get all the treasures. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's like because if we take out like just cut all those blue and, uh, and black cards for the moment, like if you cut all that stuff and then you also... Like, because then you'd probably also cut like the Oasis Gardener, because we're not really ramping to anything, right? That puts us right um, at forty. That <laughs> puts us at forty. So maybe it's maybe it's fine. This is like a two color deck. Yeah. Um, this is honestly probably fine. I think our cards are strong right. enough. That's four mana. Like, there's nothing else here that's like super weak. Crash the town is a is a is a nice interactive trick. Yeah, two or three. I'm just looking kind of at our curve when we're gonna play things. Could plot plot both of these on two potentially gives us a lot of things to do on two then yeah what's our creature count yeah i, I kind of consider the buzzard like a two drop for all intents and purposes so we have 13 creatures uh-huh 17 land we got one sorcery two artifact eight instant all right so inst uh... creature count for me is a little light yeah it is a little bit light i would agree with that um, we honestly might be able to go to 16 lands just because our, our because our, of the curve. Yeah, the curve is pretty low. We're really like, curving it like top end is four here. Yeah. That'd give us like a little bit more room and then we could take a look and see what we've got in our pool. And we have a double black. We have a double green. So the other question is, does this make the cut? And there's a battlefield search library for a does. basic land. I think it, it absolutely does because of that double black and double green. Like, we want to make sure we're hitting that. Yeah, especially if we cut a land as well. Yeah, and then, like, what you could do is you could honestly add back in, like, if you're worried about that, the 2-2 um, the two -two that uh, gives you, like, a mana of any color. Oh, three mana one? The... You know, either that or, like, the gold pan is honestly... The nice thing about the gold pan is, you know, it's another way of kind of buffing stuff, and it kind of can also jump us forward. Um it's a pretty weak card, though. We could also run, like, maybe Rise of the Varmints. I don't know if we have, like, a lot of things that... Do we have anything that mills? We have nothing that mills, and we do only have 13 creatures. But yeah. for yeah, that's... number of number of creature cards in your graveyard, I mean, always plot that and be a late-game pretty big threat potential. Yeah, I mean, it, it could, it could you know, at least be something. Oh, I would put in Lively Dirge, actually. That card, I think, Oh, is... yeah, that's right. You, yeah, okay. Now we have at least something we definitely wanted to get back as well. Because the thing is, like, with that, we can go and find Gold Vein Hydra, right? Like, if mm -hmm. you have a bomb, you know, being able to go and find it. Oh, wait, actually, then... hold on. Search your library and put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. Return up to two creature cards with total mana and four or less. We can't actually play that then off of this. Um, 
Well, because we can't pay X. Oh, right. That's a good point. So that's Um, not going to actually get us our Hydra in any way. Yeah, I mean, that's... But now if our if Hydra get... dies, we could go find Rustine to get the Hydra back to our hand, replay that way. Yeah, and also just having Recursion in general is perfectly fine. Um, if you wanted to add another creature, I think the Gigapede we could, would be another thing we could add here. We have a pretty low um, pretty low curve. It'd be sort of a top end. But I think the Dirge is maybe a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I just hate our, our spell count to creature. Um, I guess the other thing that we could do then is if, if you really want, we could also look at, you know, splashing. Because if our deck isn't powerful enough as a two-color deck, let's make it into a three-color deck. thought we got two of those. Guess not. Fortunately, we don't have the pump spells all that much either. I mean, this is this is kind of our pump. Yeah, and it also draws cards too if we can get it through. Yeah, I think I'd just go with the the dirge. Yeah, I mean, I'm th- I'm just torn between that honestly or rise of the varmints. Sure, let's do a rise of the varmints. That'll make some more creatures for you. All right, so this is going to be our deck right here. <laughs> 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 Looks good. All right. G- gotta, gotta change the sleeves. What sleeves do I like? <laughs> sleeves are gonna get me in the mood. I admit that Bonnie Paul was, you know, uh, a bit a bit presumptuous, but oh man. But I mean so- we had to take it. That was what? First, second card, pack two. You, yeah. Things things could change and eh, you look. Mm. Yeah. I definitely think that, you know, kind of like in uh, murders at Karlov Manor. This is also a format that does reward you for being able to be open to splashing because you know there's a lot of three color cards and different colors that are pretty powerful too. So, all right, and this is going to be our deck right here. And I'm gonna do a quick stop on the video just because I'm gonna try and see if we can get Hand of Justice face back in here for us during the awesome. games, and then we'll <laughs> get right back into the gameplay. <laughs> 